We're coming to you live for the Bill Ford Talk Studio. Boomer Esiason, Greg Giannotti. It's Boomer and Gio on the fan. Simulcast across the country on CBS Sports Network. And wherever you are in the free Odyssey app, good Thursday morning. Knicks and Sixers, game six down in Philadelphia tonight. And, of course, we get a two-minute report again from the NBA telling us how they screwed everything up in the previous game. It's one of the dumbest things that happens in pro sports because there's nothing you can do about it. But the Knicks were the beneficiary of this in game two and then on the crap end of the stick in game five. And the Sixers are worried. They are doing loser things. They are worried about the Knicks fan coming in and taking over the building for a second time. So you see the ownership group buying up 2,000 tickets just to distribute to Sixers fans so this Nick fan base doesn't take over the building. That is a loser thing to do if your fan base can't buy those tickets themselves. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Yeah, good morning, Jay. I'm doing all right. Uh, you remember the Tampa Bay Lightning were doing that during the playoffs, not allowing uh, opposing fans to wear their jerseys. And then also they weren't allowing people to buy tickets out of state. Yes. As, as well. But that's the Tampa Bay Lightning. Like Tampa Bay... Tampa as a city, decent sports town, not Philadelphia. But they I'm love sorry. Their, they do love their lightning. But it's and not right. Philadelphia. I, I know it's not Philadelphia, but you know Philadelphia's a little city. It's a little baby city. It's true. Come on, you know that. Yeah, it is a little baby city. I mean, city. it's a baby city. It's like one of the smaller baby cities in the in, in the country that seems to have a bigger uh, reputation than they really should. Yeah, it's sort of like a, a cute little city. It's a right? cute little, well, yeah, I mean, it's got a couple bridges cute. going in, a couple yeah. of nice little tall buildings. The Liberty Bell. Uh, yes. The Rocky got thing. The Rocky it's cute. Steps. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, little it's tiny a cute thing. little city is what it is. So, but let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, after everything that you heard yesterday after we left the, uh, the station, you know, you gave our opinions about the game, game five, and what we think is going to happen tonight. And yeah. What we think is going to happen tomorrow. Uh, uh, is your confidence waning at all or do you feel like you're still on the pulse of the Knicks and the Sixers and what's going to happen tonight well I don't know if I'm on the pulse or not we will find out but no I my confidence has not waned at all I actually love the fact that the Sixer fans or the Sixers organization rather is distributing these tickets out to the fans because they're nervous about this I mean that that just shows me that the Knicks have them exactly where they want them and there's still going to be Knicks fans that are down there now the Knicks are an underdog tonight I can understand why that is but I, I really do believe that what happened at the end of game five is going to ignite something in this team to reach even a higher level than they have been in the past. So no, I am I'm confident and I'm not worried about being confident and it's not like being confident is going to make them lose. I just can't watch this game. I need to be given a reason in this game to not believe in them. And I haven't had that yet because basically it took a miracle for them to even lose game 5 to have this series 3-2. They've been in command most of this series. So I don't I don't think it comes back for a game seven. I think they take care of business. I think Jalen Brunson is going to have an incredible game. And I also think that Josh Hart breaks out of this funk. I, he cannot be as bad as he's been. I think this is going to be a, a Josh Hart game. And I think the Knicks win in six. And, and Joel Embiid will just, you saw how dead he was in the fourth quarter in game five. He's going to be even more dead in this game. I will I will say this in regards to Josh Hart. It's what we're talking about. It's just a shooting. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like the, it's the long range shooting we're talking about. Everything else he's still doing fine. Uh, every now and again he gets a little helter skelter if he gets in front of the team and wants to pass the the, the ball ahead. Sometimes he'll throw it away, but it's all because he's he's got energy. So I'm not my my thing about him is just he's got to knock down a couple threes sooner or later. Uh, can't be continuing to throw up bricks. But he still plays defense, still gets offensive rebounds, still you know makes steals and 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 uh, makes it difficult on whoever he's covering. So I'm not my 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 thing is just with him. It's it's just the shooting. The last two games has been I don't know. It's like has he had a. What, had he ever played professional basketball before? You know, that's yeah. I, that, and I, that's why I hope he's out there shooting today and pregame shoot around and everything, move around the court, get a lot of shots off, you know, uh, you know, catch and shoot kind of stuff in, in pregame warm up just to find his game again. Because uh it's it's been a struggle for him offensively. And they still have 
and should have won this series already, even with those struggles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, of course, you get the news yesterday with the Tyrese Maxey four-point play and the uh, NBA missed and the officials uh, missed the call. And the NBA comes out and admitted that they missed the call, which is exactly what they did at the end of game two with the two fouls and everything else. So you could say that that stuff evened out. I just don't understand. I mean, I, the the point of this is fine, meaning that the NBA wants to be transparent, say, hey, we made a mistake, uh, accountability here. But the, all it does is shine a light on the ineptitude of the officials and piss off teams and fan bases even more. Like it, 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 There is no solace that you get as a Knicks player, Knicks coach, Knicks fan, knowing that 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 four-point play shouldn't have happened, it actually makes it worse. So why does the NBA do this? I mean, all it does is infuriate the team on the on the bad end of this even more. So I, I don't know. You know, maybe what it does, it, it kind of evens it out, like you said. And, you know, let's see how much Joel Embiid is complaining tonight. Let's see how much Nick well. Nurse is complaining tonight. Uh, on the sideline and screaming at the officials. I just hope whoever the officiating crew is tonight, that they are veteran, that they are savvy, that they know what's going on, and that they will be able to handle all the crap and all the pressure that they deal with. Like, we kind of take it for granted. We like, <laughs> we just think that they're out there and they're going to always do the right thing and that they're under no pressure. I mean, they're probably under the most pressure simply because of missed calls and these NBA two-minute reports that come out after the fact that do nothing but incense, you're right, the fan bases that have that feel like they've been screwed by it. Yeah. And and I think that most Knicks fans probably feel like they were screwed by it. You can't you can't even think about it anymore. I hope the Knicks aren't thinking about it. Uh the Knicks blew that game. I mean, Mitchell Robinson said it after the game. He said, I effed up. He didn't say that that was a travel and it should have never happened. Unlike Nick Nurse and Joe L. Embiid and everybody after game two that was complaining, there was full accountability. Mm-hmm. With the Knicks and and to blowing each guy, that game. by the way, to each guy. I mean, yeah. you know, Brunson when he when he says I, he usually says it when it's a negative towards him. When he, uh, you know, Josh Hart, the same thing. Mitchell Robinson, the same thing. So I do like the fact that they ha- they take ownership in it, and then when they win, they say we. Yeah, they, they never say me. That's right. So I. Uh, you know, there is something like again, the team's likable. It's going to be intense tonight, man. I I kind of feel like this is going to be a game seven. Oh, come on. I do. Why? I don't know. Why? Because you think the Sixers were awoken in some way with this no, game five I, victory? No, I, just, and... I just think I think tonight, I don't know. I, I hope, I believe me, I hope I'm wrong. But I do know that, you know, these buildings, like, you know, if there's a game seven Knicks Sixers, mm-hmm. you know how much money the Garden makes? <laughs> I mean, this is like the perfect thing, but they got to win. Because they want to keep it going, uh, but I don't know, man. Tonight, I just have a weird feeling about this game. And well, it's obviously a bad feeling, not a weird feeling. I mean, well, well, like what? What weird feeling is overcoming you to say that they're going to lose? I this just game? listening to everybody in the station yesterday, and then you got Evan and that crew are going to the game. Tonight, yeah, and he's wondering about what he's going to wear. And I, I told Tiki, I said, make him wear a Nets Harden jersey. Mm, I'm sure that perfect. would just be perfect, right? I mean. They were discussing all this yesterday, and I just I feel like with him there, it's just ah. I don't know, Evan man. being there, yeah, you think it's going to affect I'm things? Like, why is he going? Well, <clears throat> he hates both teams. He does hate both teams. And why? So why is he going? Because he loves basketball, or is he? I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out why he's going. Well, I mean, he's been doing stuff like this ever since I've known him, where he just loves a sports road trip. I remember I went with him to Baltimore and Philadelphia where the Mets were playing the Phillies and the Yankees were playing the Orioles all the way back in like 2009 and he wanted to go to these games and I don't know what the hell I was doing going with him but I did <laughs> he just loves doing this stuff like taking his crew to a game it's what it's what he does so but there's been so many times that I have watched Evan Roberts and Tommy Lugauer film Evan Roberts leaving the garden or leaving Barclays with a puss on his face because he lost or he wanted the Knicks to lose or the Nets lost or whatever it was. 
and he's just so upset. So I'm just I'm picturing that again. I'm picturing a video posted on X by Tommy Lugauer of Evan Roberts walking out of that building, going, "Oh, I have to talk Knicks for another couple of weeks." Well, that's they the point, on. though. Well, let's just say this right now: uh, the the interest in the Knicks in the NBA right now, since I've been here, has not has never been higher. Yeah, and for him and the afternoon program and and just him in general for being and then NBA basketball fan, I mean you, he should want the Knicks to win. I I would hope so. I mean I I didn't want the Nets to win, uh, but it's not. I think that's, that's a totally, totally different, different story totally because different. the the Knicks take over the city. I think that most of the basketball <laughs> we know most of the basketball fans here are Knicks fans and didn't want to see the Nets do well. So. Yeah, he should he should want the Knicks to at least win this series. Maybe he doesn't want to see them win a championship because that would annoy him, but he should at least want them to win this series. So yeah, those guys are going down there. I got to cuz uh, Sean Morash is uh, going to Boomer and Geo live and he's going to uh, help us out and hang out with Tommy DeVito and the whole thing. And uh he's asking me, "Oh, what am I supposed to wear? What am I supposed to do this cuz I got to pack a bag because I'm leaving from the show to go down to Philadelphia and then going straight up to Jersey City to hang out with you guys. I'm like, oh, my God. Isn't he doing the show on Friday? Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell he's going to do. I got to look back at that text. Yeah, I, have, right. I have no idea what the hell he's doing. But, yeah, it's uh, he would have to be doing the show on Friday. So I guess he's going to – well, he's probably not going to go home is what it is. So he'll come back up here. He'll do the show, then go to Jersey City, and then probably go home after – uh, Boomer and Geo live. So tell that's uh, not so. Uh, tell him to wear the diaper he wore as baby New Year. <laughs> yeah. Put that on when he goes to the game. So they bought secondary market tickets, these guys, I guess. I, I, I guess they did. I'm not sure unless there's some sort of uh, maybe Spike helped them out or something. Yeah, on the other I don't end. know. Maybe. Did you see that Spike's dad, Howard Eskin, said that the Sixers themselves were putting up tickets uh, to get Knicks fans to pay premium price for them, that it wasn't just season ticket holders or Sixers fans, that the, the organization themselves was putting this stuff up. That's what he said, right? Uh, you know, uh, are they? Uh, is, is that something that they're allowed to do? I guess, I guess they are. Premium pricing, yeah. I mean, they see that all the time. Like Ticketmaster does that all the time, don't they? What, it, what is it called? Premium pricing or whatever it is. Where like the dynamic price. Di- there it is. That's right. Dynamic that's the, pricing. Yeah, dynamic with, pricing. With like, it's like Uber. It's like 37 different charges that are ultimately taxes that they're getting you with. Yes. Uh, so, so what it does is there's an algorithm in there. And actually, we, there was an issue with the Boomer and Geo Live 2 with this Ticketmaster thing. Because there's, a, there's an algorithm that kicks in on uh, when there's supply and demand. And there ended up being like tickets that were up on sale for like $400 on Ticketmaster. And I go to Spike, I'm like, whoa, 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 what are we doing here? And then they went back and corrected it. So no one ended up paying that. And they paid the price we told them they were going to pay. But yeah, Jeez. it's a word like Taylor Swift. <laughs> we want to make sure we take care of our fans. Uh, yes, that is true. We don't want to be gouging anybody. And we do have news on that, by the way, taking care of our fans. Like Taylor, White... Taylor Swift? No, or... no, no, not Taylor Swift oh, news. Okay. Uh White Eagle Hall uh, contacted us and said that uh, there might be uh, some more room. They might be clearing some more room out for some more people because of all the requests they have gotten. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, so so Howard Eskin says that uh, the Sixers themselves were putting up the tickets for so Knicks fans would pay big bucks for them. And he said, quote, if Sixers players are pissed, blame your own organization. But then again, you know, here they are, you know, uh, Ruben and Josh Harris and the ownership group down there in Philadelphia has now bought up 2,000 tickets to distribute to first responders and, and others, which is a nice PR move. But really, it's just them running scared. They're running scared. So I'm just wondering, how do they distribute those tickets? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you get those tickets into the hands of actual Philadelphia 76ers fans that who in turn won't sell them themselves? Yeah, I, that's a good good point. I don't know. But I'm sure that there is a way. I don't know. Maybe they go into a firehouse and start handing them out or going to the hospital. Hey, who's, who gets off the shift here? Here you go. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. But it looks like it. the organization's... It's like little city stuff. It is. Know? I was yeah. just to be... Took the yeah. words right out. So it's like... It's, it, this is what the Florida Panthers do. This is what the soon-to-be Utah Coyotes do. This is what the Tampa Bay Lightning do. The Carolina Hurt. By, these... by, by the way, it's going to be the Utah most likely. I don't know what it's going to be, but I think the Blizzard or the Yetis 
and uh, they already have 22,000 requests for season tickets. Good. Good for that franchise. I I don't think we could put them in this list just yet as they they are just starting. You know what I'm talking about. I said the soon-to-be but they were in Phoenix for a long time playing in an arena that was uh, you know, had 1,500 people watching the games. So that like those type of organizations, that, that's what they do. But now the Sixers have to do it. It's crazy. I mean, the, the, you know, they always talk about like a you know, little brother city. It's definitely a little brother city. But also the Sixers are like the, the third child in the little brother city. All right, so who are the other two? Well, I would say that the Eagles are one. Oh, you're talking, say, about, oh, you're talking about the teams. Yeah, I said the Eagles are oh, okay. one. The Phillies are probably like, two. I don't see Boston that way. No. No, no, no. I mean, Boston's like, you know, it's it's a it's also a smaller city than we are. Yeah. Uh, but I see them as a rabid fan base, a fan base that gets behind their teams. Yeah, imagine the Celtics having to buy up tickets because I can never say no. I know one thing, the Bruins aren't buying up tickets. They don't have to. They have a fan base much like the Rangers have a fan base. Right. So this is just it's it really is amazing how far Philadelphia has fallen as a sports town that the owners have to buy tickets off themselves just to get their own fans in the building. Think about that. They've got to buy tickets from themselves just to get their own fans in the building. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Can't lose to this team. Can't lose to that. It's going to happen. They're moving on tonight. I, well, it's going to be in the I middle of the night. I, I hope you're right. I'm just like, I don't necessarily know that I'm feeling it the same way that you're feeling it. Okay. Well, I am. Uh, doesn't mean I'm going to be right. As I said many times, what I say does not have any impact on the games. But I'm going to be confident for once. Because why not? Why not for one time believe in these guys? And I'm well, going to I mean, do it. We've been believing in them all year. Well, yeah, but until everybody jumped off the ship yesterday. At least for the most part, I didn't hear everybody, but I'm assuming it was going to be more negative than positive. Right? Yeah, but I don't think any any real, true, hardened Nick fan loves his team and is supporting this team, and it's probably more in line with your thinking of how they're going to win. I just have a little bit of trepidation going into tonight, thinking that there will be a game seven. Now, I I and believe me, there's nothing better than a game seven in your building in that place. It'd be crazy. Uh, the Garden would be making more money than ever before. Uh, but, but I would like to close it out tonight. There's no argument. I'm not arguing with you. I just, I just have a little bit more trepidation than you do because you are, you are supremely confident. Well, you were so confident that they should have won Game Five, and they should have. Yeah, that's right. And I thought it was going to be over in five. It's not. But Jalen Brunson picking up that chair and almost slamming it down, but thinking better of it. I mean, he is going to come out. And I mean, Maxi had his game. He had his game. Uh, it's not going to happen like that again. But Jalen Brunson, who had his you know his record breaking Knicks postseason performance game, I think he's going to have another game you, like that. Do tonight. you think? And I, I know it's hard because we <clears throat> they lost the game, and there's a lot of discussion about Thibodeau and his rotation and who was on the court at the end and should we have called timeout? Should they have uh, fouled? There's all that discussion that comes mm-hmm. along with a game like this that's tight and it's a playoff game. Do you think that there are any changes? in any way, shape, or form uh, in terms of his rotation? Or uh, does he continue to play the way that he's been playing it? I think he keeps it exactly the same. <clears throat> I think that, as we've said many times, you know, if if guys get in foul trouble or there's an injury, then he'll go to the bench. Other than that, he's going to keep the same rotation. He probably thinks to himself, hey, it is it is basically worked the entire time and we should be getting ready for the second round now. And all that nonsense happened. Uh, but no, I think he ends up. I think it's the same. I think it's the same rotation. All right. So he, he, here's why I bring up that point because we'll find out whether or not he's hearing it from the outside, or he's going to stick to his guns and do what he has always done. Unless, of course, like you were saying, there was an injury, and you know, in that uh, in that game four, there was an injury, and that's why Achua did play as much as he did, and there was also foul trouble in that one. You know, I mean, so now you got Mitchell Robinson back in the mix. If Mitchell Robinson's not in the mix, then Achua is in the mix. But he want and Mitch Robinson said before game five, I want to play this game. I don't want to miss this game. I want to be a part of it. And, uh, and, and quite frankly, I feel like that's the same thing that he's feeling now, that he will be in this game. But the question is, you know, do you – Again, I, I I saw what I saw in the fourth quarter, guys really, except for maybe Tyrese Maxey, 
everybody exhausted. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's Including the Including Embiid. Right. Well, Embiid was the most exhausted. He was exhausted from the second quarter on. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Peter, who lives down in AC, said he gets the Philly news down there, and the owners are walking around the streets handing out tickets to the public in restaurants, parks, and where first responders are. All right. Well, I look. I mean, that, that, that part is just, I, I know that is a joke. That, it sounds pathetic, but, you know, some owners. Sounds pathetic. It is pathetic. Okay. But, you know, some owners, you know, getting in, in front of their fans and giving fans free tickets. I can buy into that. I mean, I don't like it why they're doing it. And that's why I said, you know, they're like a little city. Like a baby I city. cannot believe that they had to buy I, it's their more own like tickets. A town. Yeah. Would you say it's like Morgan Town? Like Boston's a real city. Like a village, maybe? Chicago's a real city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would say like, you know. L.A. East, L.A. Miami. Yep. Those oh, are real cities. Right. Dallas. Dal- well, Dallas, Fort Worth. You know, that's an interesting. It's kind of spread out. But, yes, very large. Houston. Houston's a big city. A lot of people live down yep. in Houston. Yeah, those are those are real cities. What do you think about Oklahoma City? I've that's never like been little, there. That's like a little town. It's like Philadelphia, but they love their Oklahoma City Thunder. Right. Like, like, uh, yeah, Indianapolis, sort of like Philadelphia, sort of like that. You know? Okay. Yeah. Cute little place. Bop in and out. You know, go see the one monument or thing that you want to see, and then uh, get out of there. Yeah, go up the rocky steps, and maybe the owners of one of the professional sports teams will hand me a ticket while I'm up there <laughs> because they can't get their own fans in the. Well, building. I, I will say though, with the owners doing that, that is. That is fan engagement. You know, your boy Ledecky does that. Okay. John Ledecky has never had to buy tickets up to hand out to Islander fans because another fan base took over their building in a playoff game. I mean, he went to – he gave free playoff tickets to families in need and families who had gone through stuff and and that were true Islander fans – he did that before the I'm playoffs. I'm telling you, like, both the Devils and the Islanders would love to play the Rangers in their building 10 times a year. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Uh, all right. Let's take a break. We're late here. We got to get to Jerry Recco. It's Boomer and Geo on the fan and CBS Sports Network. Just getting started on this Thursday morning. 